Hi everyone and welcome to my next video tutorial which is going to be focused on integrating MariaDB within our Django application. So MariaDB of course stands for Maria Database and this is going to be the type of database that we want to set up in our Django project. Now MariaDB has a foundation that has been built upon by MySQL now there's more information here that you can read about MariaDB right here if you just want to have a look at the comparison between MariaDB and MySQL. Now since I mentioned that the foundation of MariaDB is based on MySQL, we're going to have to ensure that we also set up the MySQL client as well. So this is going to allow us to communicate and utilize our MariaDB database here and provide that interface for Python to MySQL. All right, so just keep that in mind. All right, another thing that I also wanna mention is that you're going to want to make sure that you have a Django project to which you want to apply this to. It's very important that you've got that in place. So let's go on ahead and ensure we have that. All right, but the first thing that we need to do, of course, is we need to install the MySQL client. So let's go ahead and in our Django projects, um, Terminal, we can install MySQL. Okay, there we go. So it has been installed, so make sure that you install it into place. The next thing that you're going to want to do is in your settings.py file of your project, you're going to want to add in the following configuration here for our uh, MariaDB database here. So what we're going to want to do is you're going to want to, first of all, make sure your server isn't running. And then you can just comment out your default SQLite database. So this is our local testing database. So we can just comment that out. And you want to add in this configuration here, which we'll use for uh, MariaDB. So I'll just uh, remove that. And this is what we need here. So you want to make sure you add the following here to your code. So you're going to have default, and this is going to be our new default database with um, the engine, um, database name, uh, database username, password, host, and port. Now the engine here I've already set up accordingly here is the value. So you want to add in now django.db.backends.mysql. So that's what you're going to utilize for your Maria data, MariaDB database. So you want to make sure that you have that here into place. So you want to set up that engine as follows. Okay, so make sure you take some time now and put this in your settings.py file. And then what we're going to do is we're going to step-by-step step add in the database name, username, password, host, and endpoint, and the port as well that we want to use for MariaDB. Okay, so as soon as you've got that into place, let's continue. So to effectively generate and utilize our database, we're going to utilize AWS to provision um, MariaDB for us. Okay. Now, if you've never used AWS before, okay, and it's your first time, what I'll do is I will include a tutorial um, on how you can go ahead and get started with creating your AWS account and uh, additional information. I'll add that in the description below. So let's continue. So once you've created your AWS account and you're on AWS, what you want to do is you want to search for RDS. So this is the Managed Relational Database Service on AWS, and we can click on that. And take a moment to load the dashboard. And what you want to do is you want to keep track of the region where you are in because the database instance or the DB instance is gonna to pertain to your region here. So I'm just keeping it on Ohio here. So that means that I'm gonna have a database instance here, which I'm going to create in that region. So if you switch to another region, you're not going to see the same resources in that region if you created it elsewhere. So just keep that in mind, very important. So let's click on DB instances. And in this region, I'm going to create database instance. Okay, and you just want to be a bit patient as the page loads and scroll down. Um, we're going to use the standard create database creation method. It is easy create, but we have a lot of configuration settings that we need to set up into place. So we can use standard create. Under engine options here, what you want to do is you want to choose MariaDB. Okay, this is the one that we want to utilize. Okay, and as you can see, there are multiple options, but we're going to choose this one. 
Okay, we can leave it on the specified engine version. And here under templates, you want to choose the free tier. Okay, so make sure you select free tier. If you don't have that option available to you, then the next best would be dev um, slash test. But let's opt for the free tier as we can. Next, we have the DB instance identifier. So this is the name of your database instance in AWS slash RDS. And I'm just going to leave it as database one. However, you can change this. So I can show you for demonstration how you'll do that. You would just go ahead and remove this and you can just say my dash database dash one. Very simple. Okay, then under the master username, okay, we have it set to admin. Right, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to decide what you want to call this. I'm going to call this um, uh, admin underscore db underscore user. And I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to head over to my Django settings here. And here under user, I'm going to add in that username, which is admin underscore db underscore user. All right, so that's where you want to set the first part. Let's continue. Next, you want to def decide how you want to set up your credentials. So we're going to use self-managed. You can auto-generate a password if you desire. However, I'd recommend you just put in your own password here. So I'm just going to uh, enter in a password. So I'm just going to set that up. So I'm going to say main. Uh, uh, okay. And then I'm going to put that in again. Okay, and I'm then going to head on to my settings here and I'm going to add in the password here. Okay, so that will be your password for the associated user. Okay, and you can also see your strengths here for how strong your password is. Okay, uh, under instance configuration here. So since we're using the free tier, it's going to choose the smallest option for us. So we've got a db.t4g.micro. And I'd recommend you choose uh, t3.micro instead. So it's been out longer and I would just recommend that just for testing. I haven't tested out this new one yet. So I have tested t3.micro. So I'd recommend using this one. So it's um, uh, just the one I'd suggest. Okay, under storage here, we're going to use general purpose SSD storage. Uh, 20 gig will start off as the allocated storage. We will have storage auto scaling as well which is automatically enabled with a max storage threshold of a thousand gig. All right. Under availability and durability, this has to do with, um, with setting up your database to be in a multi AZ for multiple availability. Um, however, this is out of scope if you're using the free tier. So you don't need to worry about that. Under connectivity, the important part that you need to set up here, if you scroll down, is you need to make sure that you enable public access. This will ensure that we have an endpoint or host that we can connect to, to this database. We're going to use the default VPC as is. We're not going to set anything else here. Now there are a lot of settings here in place, but I don't want to go too involved here. I want to keep it rather simple for a simple um, database connection. Under additional configuration here, you want to keep in mind of the database port. So we have 3306. So we can head on to our settings.py and there we've acquired the port value. All right, let's continue. So we've got that into place. So let's continue now. You can also add in tags if you want to associate the resource. Under database authentication, we'll be using password authentication. Uh, we're not going to enable enhanced monitoring. Under additional configuration, here you need to set your database name and I'm going to call this my main db um, 09, something very simple. I'll copy that. And I'm gonna add that there as the value of the name. So that's your database name. Now we just need to add in the host and then we've got everything connected. However, the host endpoint will only be generated once we've created our database instance in RDS. Right, so we've got that set. Now you can scroll down and as you can see, we'll have automated backups enabled encryption by default, um, and a lot of other factors here. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our database. So we can say create database. 
Okay, so you can see our database is currently being created. Now it's gonna take some time here, so I'd recommend that you wait for about 15 minutes and then you can come back here and you'll see that our status will be under available. As you can see, our database is called my-database-1 as the identifier, which we set up in our configuration settings. But yes, all you wanna do now is you just want to wait for your database to be available. And you can, of course, refresh here to see the progress in terms of the status and everything being populated here in terms of the information that pertain to this database instance. Right, so let's just give it a moment and then we'll return as soon as it's been created. All right, so welcome back. So as we can see, our database was successfully created. And what I recommend you do is just refresh here and just double check that the status of your database is available because sometimes your database can be created and then the status just says backing up. All right, so your database has been um, created, it's just backing up all the data, but it's not available just yet. That usually takes an extra few minutes, So just keep that in mind. All right, so our database has been created. Now let's go on ahead and get our host endpoint. So you can click in your database now, your database instance, should I say, in AWS. Then you can scroll down and then you'll see here your endpoint. So you can copy the following, head on over to your Django application here by host. You can paste that in as is. All right, so that's going to be your endpoint. And the port here, as you can see, is also mentioned here too. So you can also get your port uh, number there as well. Right now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to configure our inbound rules with our security group. So we want our Django application to seamlessly connect with this database. So to do so, we need to click on that security group that's assigned to this database instance. And that's going to take us to the EC2 service under the security group section. Now, of course, what you're going to want to do here is you're just going to want to uh, refresh. Okay, it's going to say no matching resource found, and then it's going to appear. If for some reason it doesn't appear, you can just say clear filters and refresh, and you should have your default security group here, which you can click on. Okay, so you can click on that and you can scroll down and here we'll have inbound rules. So we want to edit these inbound rules and we have a default inbound rule here allowing all traffic to access um, everything in place here. However, we need to be a bit more specific with our database. So we wanna add a rule and we want to set up two of them. So first you wanna type in my SQL and that's going to show forward slash Aurora. And the port here will be 3306, which correlates with the port that we have here. Now remember, the foundation for MariaDB is on MySQL. However, MariaDB is its own type of database. Okay, it is distinct from MySQL. Just keep that in mind. All right, so we've got that set here. And now we want to allow access from all IPv4 addresses. And we also want to allow access from all IPv6 addresses denoted by the following CIDR block. So these are our CIDR blocks, and this is going to allow us to connect to our database um, from our Django application. So make sure you've got that in place. Once you've done so, you can scroll down and save these rules. There we have it, so we've saved those rules, been modified, and we can just navigate now to the homepage of the AWS Management um, Console. Perfect. Now what we can do is head on to our settings.py file, make sure you've added in all the options, all the values accordingly as I have right here. And then what you can do is you can head on over to your terminal and you just wanna run python manage.py run server. Okay, and what you're going to see now is a migration message. And this is an indication, if you see this unapplied migrations message, it's a good indication that you've been connected to your new database, which is right here, to MariaDB. And of course, just make sure that you've commented out your SQLite database as well. So now you've been connected. So that's how you connect to your MariaDB database. Now let's just go ahead and test the process. Right, so as we can see here, uh, we have those migrations to migrate. So what we can do, is we can go ahead and just stop the server and type CLS. And you can just type in Python manage.py migrate. So we can push all of those default migrations to our database. So this is going to take a moment. So all we're going to want to do now is we're just going to want to be patient as this gets completed. So let's just wait for that. 
Right, so welcome back. So we can see those migrations were completed. So now we can just clear this up and let's uh, run our server now and let's see if those migrations have been completed. Okay, and we should then no longer see that message. And there we go, good to go. So we made those migration. Now let's test uh, the process by creating a super user. So we can stop our server and run python manage dot I create super user. Okay, and we can call this um, admin 101. Skip, enter in a password. And again. And now let's run our server. Okay, there we go. It's now running. Perfect. And we can now head on over to our um, website and go to forward slash admin. And now you want to enter in those super user credentials. Right. So as soon as you've entered in those credentials, you can now log in to your Django admin. We'll just take a moment here to log you in. And here we are. You'll now notice, for example, if you go to your user model and assuming that you have a lot of users and such, you'll notice that you'll only have that particular super user that you just created because now we're working with our production database, so MariaDB itself, and all of the data now that we'll um, utilize in our application that's saved and stored is going to be stored in our MariaDB um, database instead of our SQLite database. So do keep that in mind here. So all that data net from now on is going to be cleanly into your new production database. All right, so that's it for this video tutorial. That's how you can integrate MariaDB uh, into your Django application. Now I'm just gonna show you how you can stop everything with your resources. So you wanna head on back to AWS and go to RDS. And you can just click on that there. All right, keep in mind the region where you created that instance. So we can see we've got one out of 40 DB instances. Let's click on that. And now what you wanna do is you wanna click here on the radio button next to your database instance, go to actions, then you can go to delete. We can remove that uh, create final snapshot option, remove retain backups, um, check the acknowledgement. And we just wanna say delete me. And then you can say delete and that will delete your database instance for you. All right, guys. So this process will take some time, but as we can see, the status is deleting and it will be terminated in due time. But yes, um, that's it, everyone, for this video tutorial. And as always, thank you for the support and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.